It's August the 16th, 2012 at Bletchley Park. A group of volunteers are meeting for a progress meeting. Their aim is to build a working replica of EDSAC, Cambridge University's first computer. EDSAC stands for Electronic Delay Storage Automatic Calculator. EDSAC ran its first program on the 6th of May 1949. EDSAC is important because it was the first computer that was actually built for other people to use to solve real problems. There have been computers before that, like the famous Colossus machine at Fletchley Park that was used exclusively for code breaking. There have been an American machine called ENIAC that was used for doing artillery shell calculations. So they were very special purpose. There was an early machine at Manchester University called Baby, but really it was only used by the people who built it to prove their computer circuits. EDSAC was built by a character called Boris Wilkes, who wanted to build a machine for the mathematical laboratory at Cambridge University for use by scientists, mathematicians and engineers to work on problems that previously they would have to solve using hand calculators or pencil and paper methods. EDSAC gave them a thousand times speed up in the speed at which they could do calculations and in fact it helped three Cambridge scientists win Nobel Prizes. We're building the EDSAC replica here at the National Museum of Computing because it is the place in the UK where there is a collection of working machines. This historic hut houses the working reconstruction of Colossus, the world's first electronic programmable digital computer built on this spot in the mid-1940s. Nearby is a recently renovated machine from 1951 built for the Harwell Atomic Research Centre. It's probably the world's oldest working original computer. It uses Decatron valves for volatile memory to display stored numbers and like EDSAC its input and output uses punched paper tape. And in fact building EDSAC here fills the gap in their collection dating as it does from the late 1940s to the early 1950s and so it's the natural place for it to be located. We really kicked off the project in March this year and assembled a, a team of volunteers for a kickoff meeting where we talked about the project and invited people to look at different parts of the machine and start thinking about how it was designed and constructed. Today is really our first progress meeting where people are coming back with what they've worked out. Some people have got complete designs, others have got demonstration parts of circuits, yet others have got unresolved questions. Just as with Colossus, virtually nothing of EDSAC survives. A few equipment chassis like this one, a mercury delay line. Much of the design is inspired guesswork. There are photographs, circuit diagrams and notebooks. Of course, we have a big challenge. We weren't left with a blueprint of the original machine. We have only partial documentation and some of the things that they used in the 1940s are no longer available to us. And so there have to be some compromises. And we know from some of the notebooks that as they built it, they had to change the design significantly. We have a lot of photographs, but we don't know which ones are of the machine in its early days. And it changed a lot by the end of its life as they built new parts of the machine and extended it in various ways. But there's very little actually about the physical construction and the, the detailed engineering. And so we're having to reinvent quite a lot about how the machine worked, the, the low-level design of the circuits, and how those circuits were assembled and constructed. During the day, each member of the team gives a presentation on some aspect of the work. A number of different parts of the design have been worked out from the scraps of evidence that have survived. The other one's fairly simple. We just want a short delay here. The arithmetic unit. Try and produce work out. Peter Lawrence has been using circuit diagrams and surviving photographs of the machine to work out how today's components might be laid out in an authentic way on a new chassis to make what's known as the clock pulse generator. And Chris Burton reports on what's known of the functions of the various chassis and what's still to be worked out. But we're not sure. So there's a little bit of unknown what they are and our current state is the green is we're well on the way to producing the documents to manufacture those. The key issue for us is building authentic replica. That means building something that matches what we can see in the surviving photographs, building something that runs programs that EDSAC would have run and as much as we can building it using components and techniques from that time. And so it's a giant jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. 
We don't rely on bolts and nuts to hold oh, the earth across the face. The team also discussed the compromises needed to satisfy today's health and safety regulations. For example, the original design had exposed mains wiring and poor earthing. A crucial part of the electronic delay storage automatic calculator design was the delay storage, the way the machine stored numbers. EDSAC used mercury delay lines which needed replacing frequently, and mercury is a poison. It's a balancing act. How authentic this is authentic? Is an of a nickel, delay line. nickel delay lines are a later but yeah, almost contemporary the alternative, so they'll be used instead. Number. We want to end up with a replica, but we also want to build something that is easy to maintain and something where it's fairly easy to diagnose and find faults. And so we've got a, a batch of open questions as to how we go about doing that. So why rebuild EDSAC? First, to give us a better understanding of our computer heritage and to create a new archive of historic material about early computing. Secondly, to celebrate an early triumph of British computer technology and the creation of the world's first computer for users. Next, reconstruction allows us to revive disappearing expertise and learn about the technical challenges faced by the early pioneers. Finally, having EDSAC working will give us a valuable new and living educational resource for today's students at the National Museum of Computing. But my feeling is we're getting quite close to the point where we're actually going to start building some bits of this stuff and assembling and testing it, which is absolutely fantastic.